Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about why Magic the Gathering Pro slash e-celebrities make very poor employees for regular jobs. So today I'm going to focus mainly on the mana source, but also talk about Tolarian Community College and other Magic Pros like AJ. So in a recent, arg recent article by his previous ex-girlfriend, AJ, his ex-girlfriend said that AJ did not pay for food, he did not pay for rent, he did not pay for any of the living expenses, and he lived off pretty much what C was bringing in. I remember reading an article by Todd Stevens, and the article was that he was too good to deliver pizzas, and his wife really wanted him to get a job but the job he wanted was to be a Magic the Gathering pro. Another Magic pro, Sam Black, he lives with seven other guys in a small apartment. Was the last time I heard of Sam Black. And he is considered an innovator of the game. And even when Magic the Gathering was doing its, uh, you know, it's showing off how awesome Magic pros were. Owen, I believe, still lives with his sister and his mom. Weds lives with his parents, and that is true. He, to my knowledge, has never had a stable job. Uh, one of the reasons he says he cannot work is due to IBS, which is interesting. It's interesting to see what some, how someone who's never had a job sees other people who have jobs. Uh, he's very quick to try to fire them. He's very quick to try to lay blame on them, although they're just doing their jobs. Uh, the same with Tulane Community College. At most, he was a part-time professor. At most. And even in his videos, he would acknowledge that he was not doing a great job. And they were taking his classes away. Uh, he does speak... I was a teaching assistant for 14 classes at NYU, and I have loved my classes. It was an opportunity to teach them, but I can tell from his tone and his voice, Tulane Community College didn't really want Brian, wasn't actually a great college professor. He wasn't passionate about teaching. There are teachers who are vastly underpaid. There, are, I was watching another YouTube video about a guy, um, his wife is named Mallory, and his channel is Stefan Vlogs. He also plays Magic. That's how I found him. And his wife cries because she misses her students that much, and she has to quit because it's too stressful. She's not getting paid enough, and you know she teaches at a very low income area. I always felt that teachers are teachers teach based on passion they're getting underpaid there's no fame component right of being a teacher Tolarian didn't want to do any of that he didn't want to do that he wanted the fame and he wanted the money so he stopped teaching you don't need to be a full-time youtuber you can teach if that's something you wanted to do i still draw drawing does not make me money but I enjoy it, and I really do have a good time. So although I, I still teach drawing classes, I still fall, I still make very bad, quote financial decisions, because I enjoy it. I'm not saying that teachers should continue to be underpaid. What I'm saying is, if you are truly passionate about something, you will make it work. So that gets me into Evan. Evan and others, uh, many of these magic pros and our e-celebrities like Frank, they don't have real jobs. Their job is to more or less be a sleazebag slash douchebag and live off females that they more or less entrap. Just like AJ. AJ was a nice guy. Then his meals were, were paid by his ex. His rent was paid by his ex. And they never get a real dose of reality because everyone's ooing, eyeing about this awesome magic pro 
In real life, being a magic pro means nothing, as John Finkel found out on OKCupid. John Finkel found that out very fast when Alyssa, someone who he met on a dating website, OKCupid, made fun of him. Uh, for, basically said, free strikes, you're out, John Finkel, because you look like a nice guy, you are a man's wealth. He, she used the fact that he was a world champion in magic against him. And honestly, I think he was ashamed to play Magic because he never mentioned it. He never mentioned it. You know, if you are the best at something, which John Finkel is, if you're the best NBA player, you're the best chess player, like Maverick, um, the the dude that's on YouTube, he's really good. If you're just if you're the best at um, the that cube, that the, the cubics or whatever, if you're the best at League of Legends. Yeah, that's probably something that you would, you know, just mention on your first date. But if you're the best magic player, you don't ever mention it. And then the person finds out and then pretty much writes an entire article on Gizmo saying that you suck because you're a magic player. <laughs> Most of my friends, the only thing they know about magic is the butt crack incident that was on BuzzFeed and went viral. That is when they think of Magic the Gathering. One of my friends sees a secretary, really funny, but she's like, oh, so that was like a plumber's convention because of the butt cracks, right? <laughs> like, so they live in this little bubble where Magic the Gathering is the end all be all and they find other people who worship them, uh, worshiping false gods and whatnot. And, it, and they feel like they're entitled, but what they're actually doing has very little, are they helping save kids? Are they doing charity work? That's all good and well, but they're still living fully off donations and of others. If you don't have a job and you've never worked a job, then where's your income coming from? It can only come from one place, right? Donations. And we live in a society where someone like the mana source can never, he never had a job a single day in his life. A W-2 job where he paid into social security, disability, and benefits. Yet, he might be the first one in line to get them. What a sad society that is. Where I don't care. So here's the, the rub. There are people... And I do believe in this society contract that we have all agreed we're in this together and we have to take care of each other, especially if you are in the same country or the same state or the same local. There are people who are born with in worse conditions than you are, and it's up to society to take care of them, but they should try their best. Um, I, I keep seeing on LinkedIn... This is not my biggest social media profile. My biggest one is on LinkedIn. You see the story of the the mentally handicapped guy who worked at McDonald's for like 35, 40 years or something. Yeah, he's a benefit to society. And I would say he's an inspiration to people. The same where when I go running and someone who may be overweight is also running, they're maybe not moving super fast. That's awesome to see. Nothing makes nothing inspires me quite like seeing someone who's trying to change their life for the better and someone who's not reliant on others. No matter how many likes and tweets and hearts you get on Facebook or Twitter, that you're the only one who can exercise. You're the only one who can live a healthy life. You're the only one who can avoid eating bad food. No amount of likes can help you do that. So now we get into magic. Why I think that magic is the worst job. Um, there's no scalability. There's no experience. So if you are a entry level developer just from Code Camp, maybe we give you 45000 a year. But in four years, you should at least be a junior developer at the very least. So we give you 70. And then another four years, you're a senior developer and you make six figures now easily. And maybe even more, you can be a project manager in 
20 years, you could be a very good developer. In Magic, there's no scalability. There's no, um, I'm a Magic Pro. It's not scalable. This game may not be around 20 years from now. Or if it is around, it might be for younger kids. The one thing that I find very interesting is when you look at the 24 Magic or 32 Magic Pros they selected, there's not that many who are young. Uh, Shenhar Shahar, I think, is the youngest. Everyone else is like 30 or 40. And it's like, is this really going... If I'm 12 and I'm playing Minecraft, do I really want to watch 40-year-olds play MTG Arena? I do because I'm older and I grew up with John Finkels and the Seth Manfields and these people, but a 12-year-old is not. A 12-year-old is going to want to see other 12-year-olds play that game. And currently, there are no 12-year-old Magic Pro. There's not even 18-year-old Magic Pro. I mean, there's not like League of Legends when they start outside high school. So my initial feelings on this is very draconic. It's very black and white. I don't have much gray area. I think if you dedicate your life to Magic the Gathering, that is an absolute mistake. Go out there, be a developer, make the next Uber, make the next Facebook, do a little bit of code for a self-driving car, and you will promote, you will have a good impact. Go out there and have an impact on society. Don't be a taker, be a giver. Give something back to society. Even someone working at McDonald's, that the guy who I always see on my LinkedIn who was mentally handicapped and he worked at McDonald's like 25 years, 30 years, he pays taxes. He pays social security. He pays disability. And he goes to work every day. Now that's inspiring. That's something that I look at and I say, you know what? That's the American dream, right? You come into America and you don't have everything that you need. And maybe you are disadvantaged one way or another. And you work hard every day and people respect you. I respect that guy. I have never even met the guy. I would love to meet that guy. I respect him. I respect a person who is running in you know cold weather and they're trying to lose weight. I absolutely respect that person. But magic pros, magic content creators who make you know a living from this, I have very little respect for. I don't want to say zero respect because they can always earn my respect back. But if you've never worked a nine to five, I'm not saying that we all live in an environment that everyone needs to work a nine to five. Don't take it out of context. I'm saying that until you work a nine to five, you don't know what life is really like. You live in an imaginary realm. And that bubble, you can live in this bubble forever and ever. But it's not going to make you stronger. It's not going to give you a better backbone. And the end of the day, you know, AJ or Frank or Evan or Weds, Anthony or Brian or any of these people, you're not learning you're not learning a skill set that is valuable post magic and there is there will be a post magic you can't be a 50 year old playing mtg arena your the audience is going to be 12 to 18 there's a problem there is a problem and a problem is going to come up to, on you real fast anyway bye guys